Pourquoi je peux pas en trouver hein ah, Mais c'était pas dessus en fait. Ok. Là, ma pensée. Attends, prends-le. <rire> So, um, hi everybody. Um, my name is uh, Laurent Boron, and um, I will present you uh, the dynamic stereoscopic uh, previs. So, um, what about me? I'm a research engineer in uh, Inria, Grenoble, in France. Um, I'm working in on uh, stereoscopic cinematography and computer graphics. Uh, my lab in RIA is a public institute in computer sciences and mathematics, and uh, my team works on uh, innovative tools for interactive cre uh, creation of animated content, 3D content. Uh, so I um, work on the project Action 3DS, that is a research project, uh, with my uh, supervisor, Rémi Ronfa. And uh, we have some partners, uh, Binocles 3D, that is a French 3D uh, producer, and uh, the school uh, Louis Lumière, that is a cinematography uh, school in Paris. And Imagine is my, the name of my team. <clears throat> so, uh, what is the dynamic stereoscopic previs? So, um, basically, it's a tool for Novice Blender users that offers an easy and intuitive ways uh, to fully control a virtual stereoscopic camera for virtual shooting. But it is also um, a virtual projection room uh, to view 3D as a spectator will see it in a cinema. Um, in brief, um, I ran into the, the Blender game engine so we can say that it's a game where the goal is to shoot a movie. So, um, shooting a movie, as we can see on these pictures, is uh, something uh, difficult, and uh, it, 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 requi it, it, it re requires uh, um, a lot of equipment, as, as we can see. Uh, it involves a lot of people and um, a lot of time to prepare the set and everything, and of course, uh, it costs a lot of money. So. Um, to, avoid, to avoid problems, um, it's really, really important to plan everything before starting shooting uh, on stage like this. Um, so that's why uh, previs, previsualization is uh, really important. So um, what is previsualization? So it's making a route a computer-generated version of a movie before starting shooting the movie. Uh, but it's more than just making a, a, a movie. Um, it's also turning ideas into uh, something more specific, uh, specification. So um, as input, we can have a, a movie script or a storyboard, and uh, as output, we have specification on shots, on uh, set, uh, on the blocking and the coverage. So the blocking is uh, where are the actors on the set and how they move on the set. And the uh, coverage is uh, where are the cameras on the set and how the camera moves on the set. And as we are doing um, stereoscopic previs, we also have um, specification on 3D parameters. <clears throat> So um, it allows uh, the director to uh, prepare the, the shooting so to save time. And uh, he can plan a complex shot, and he can identify um, the technical difficulties. And of course, he will save time and money. And also, we can evaluate the budget of uh, the movie. <clears throat> So uh, this is an example of previs done with, uh, with Blender. On the left, you have the image uh, taken from the secret number of uh, Cohen Levy. Uh, so this is the previs images. And on the right, you have the final images of uh, the movie. So I, I, 
as you can see, it's quite similar, even if it's very raw on the, on, on the left. Um, on the right, sorry. <clears throat> Uh, so this previs has been done entirely with uh, with Blender. So if we want if you, if we want to to do previs with Blender, we have to know very well how to use um, Blender. But for directors, directors don't know how to use Blender. So um, Blender is is a good thing for artists, but um, it's not suitable for directors that wants to just shot the movie virtually. Um, so let's have a look as, uh, at um, how um, did we proceed. So uh, we have uh, three steps, the storyboard, the modeling, and the virtual shooting. So um, the storyboard stage is, um, well, the director uh, draws the storyboard by hand, and then he send um, this storyboard to the Blender artist. So the Blender artist, I, I was the, the Blender artist. Um, so with this storyboard, I start modeling. So I create, created um, the set, the virtual scene, the characters and uh, everything needed to shoot this movie virtually. Um, so I worked in uh, in Bender, and then once um, once it was done, I sent the blend file uh, to the director. So it's the reddish um, area, and um, uh, with the the game engine, it will do the virtual shooting. So there is. Two parts. One part is in green. It's uh, Blender uh, for the artist, and uh, the, the the red part is the DSP tool uh, into the game engine for the the right for the director to shoot the movie. So, um, as you can see, uh, there are two arrows uh, between the modeling and the virtual shooting. Um, that's because um, sometimes the directors wants to change things in the virtual model, you know. So if he wants a bigger set or if he wants another actor or things like that, then he can ask uh, to the Blender artist and uh, he modify it and he send back a blend file. And then uh, the director use this blend file and press P and run the game engine with the, the dynamic stereosco stereoscopic tool. So um, we use the same blend file in the two uh, stage. So it's really useful. <clears throat> so um, this is um, the storyboard. Um, the storyboard we used in um, uh, to do uh, our previs. So, uh, as as you can see, there are uh, some indication on the starting point of the camera, the ending, and uh, there are some arrows, green arrows, to uh, say uh, what happens in between. And uh, you also have a top view of uh, the set. So this is the the plan of a real set um, with some indication on the character, um, the actor position, and the camera movements. Um, then the next step is uh, to create uh, this set into, the, into Blender. So as you can see here, um, and here also, so we have uh, the the actress and uh, the, the set with the chair and uh, the camera, it's uh, in the middle. So I worked in, um, in Blender to, to produce this uh, virtual scene. And um, finally, uh, once I finished, um, I have a blend file. And when we run this blend file um, into the Blender game engine, 
um, we have this interface. So this is the interface, the user interface we have into the Blender game engine. So um, we created this interface that is specific um, for the virtual shooting. So as you can see, there's no extra features, only what uh, the director needs to do the virtual shooting. So um, as you can see here, it's a through the lens um, view of um, the camera that is shooting this virtual scene. And um, uh, the, the yellow frame is um, uh, the convergence plane. I will explain it later. Um, so let's let's have a, a small demo. So um, the um, the user is uh, controlling uh, this uh, camera into the game engine with uh, with a gamepad. So um, it can control, as we can see, uh, the pen angle. So from the left to the right, the tilt angle from top to down. And also it can control the position of the camera on set. And you have the real time view of what it's doing. Okay. And we can also uh, set the height of the camera. And like this, we can. Uh, Build. We can um, do the, the framing of uh, of the the shot. Um, we have also um, a top view, just like uh, into the. Um, the storyboard. So, if you want to put the, the camera to the, somewhere in the in the scene, we can see the yellow frame here. That is the convergence plane. Um, so that was the demo. Uh, the camera parameters. So, as you can see on the left, there are uh, the camera parameters. So it's stereoscopic um, camera parameters. So you have. Uh, 12 degrees of freedom. So as you can see, there's the dolly position, the height of the camera, the pan angle, uh, the tilt angle, and of course, um, something very important, it's the convergence, the convergence distance, and the interaxis that are the two uh, 3D parameters. So um, it's a lot of parameters, and the director cannot control them all with a single gamepad. So because in in on a real um, on a real shooting session, there are many people behind the camera to control the camera, as, as you can see here, um, and it's not easy. Um, here is a um, three camera um, with at least three or four people plus the, the one you don't see on this photo that are um, um, that are controlling uh, parameters of uh, the camera and um, so eventually um, What we could have, uh, what what we could have, um, what we could do is uh, to have um, many users with uh, many gamepads, and all of them control one parameters at the same time, just like on a on a real shooting. But um, we prefer to um, introduce uh, roles. So what are roles? It's um, well, roles gives to the user the control of a subset of uh, the parameters of the camera. So, as you can see, there is the, a camera operator, a camera assistant, so the camera operator will control the, the pan and tilt angle. The camera assistant will control the position of the, 
of the of the camera on on set. And of course, there is the stereographer that will control the two uh, 3D parameters. So um, each, each role gives to the user the control to um, some parameters of the camera. And um, of course, we need to record uh, the performance of uh, the, the user. So each time the user takes a role, it can record its performance with, uh, with our um, uh, incremental recording features. Um, as you can see here, we have a um, um, kind of timeline with, um, with some, with some uh, controls. We can control the speed and we can record. So uh, each role after the other, the, um, the user will we will record the, the, his performance uh, till he is satisfied. So he will record and re-record till he controls every parameters of the camera. So he can do alone um, the same job as uh, the team we saw just before. <clears throat> so just another demo to show you what we can do uh, with it. Okay, so here you can see, we can see that we control the tilt angle and the pan angle. And there is a small camera movement. The camera is uh, um, it's going backward just uh, a bit, but we, we can see it. Let's play again. So it's really easy uh, to uh, reproduce uh, what I've been playing uh, on the storyboard. We can do it in two or three times. That's it. <clears throat> And of course, um, there's this uh, little window on the left. Um, this is the virtual projection room. Um, I will talk about this, but first I have to introduce some basic concepts of uh, stereoscopy. So um, basically, uh, to, sh to shoot a 3D movie, we need uh, two cameras. So we shoot with two cameras, as we can see here. So the cameras are on the left, and the actor is here on uh, the right. And the two cameras are in two different, have two different point of views. So we have two different images. And then we can project those images on a screen, just like this. So we have uh, this uh, image. And um, the user with uh, 3D glasses will be able to see uh, the, the 3D images. So we can construct, uh, we can find the 3D point um, from this image. So let's say that we, we want to find where is the uh, right here of the actor into the, into the, into the, the, the scene. So to do that, we uh, we find the intersection of the two lines uh, crossing uh, to the eyes of the of the of the spectator to the the point. So the the left eyes will see the the left the um, left images. So the the red red eye will see the the bluish um, image, and uh, the bluish eye will will see the the red uh, the red image. And like this, uh, we can compute the point where the um, spectator uh, have the impression of seeing the, the actor with the 3D glasses. So um, what about the screen size? So as you can see on this example, um, we projected um, 
this image on screen size and uh, let's say that the 3D effect is, uh, is okay. What happens if we take the same image and we project it on different screen size? Let's take um, the half size. So for the half size screen, si screen um, wide, um, it's the same image, but the 3D effect, as you can see here, is lower. And for a bigger screen, as you can see, the 3D effect is very excessive, so the spectator won't be able to see the, 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 the actor in 3D because it's too excessive. So um, the screen size matters. So the problem is how to do um, stereoscopic previs for, for cinema on a computer screen because a cinema screen wise is about 10 or 20 meters and a computer screen is about 30 to 50 centimeters. So um, if we set the 3D parameters on computer for the previs and we want to project it on the cinema screen, then the 3D won't be okay. Um, so this is a um, big problem. <clears throat> we can, um, there's a solution that is, um, okay, it's uh, doing the, the previs on a cinema screen, but um, it's not possible. So that's why uh, we introduced the virtual projection room. So as you can see, it's a geometric representation of object into a projection room. Of course, uh, this room uh, is customizable, so you can choose to have a bigger projection room with a larger screen, just like this, that looks like a, a cinema room. And um, we can have uh, in this virtual projection room a top view of uh, this room. So as we can see here, and here we can see that we have a good idea of, of where are the object in the 3D image and how round uh, they are. So it's uh, really uh, useful uh, to avoid um, 3D, 3D stereoscopic problems. So let's have an example of uh, a problem a problem of roundness. So as, as you can see here, um, the 3D image is very flat and we can control the 3D parameters to fix it, to give the image more volume, more roundness. So it's really simple and really fast. Another example is um, the window violation. So here um, there is the actress on the bottom of the, the screen and as we can see here in 3D, she's in front of the screen, but she's cut by something by the screen that is, be, uh, that is behind her. So this is a problem and we can easily fix it by shifting the camera just like this. And now she's not occluded anymore. And finally, um, another problem that is the, the cardboard effect where you have death into the 3D image but uh, each uh, object into the scene looks very flat and we can fix it uh, also with, with the tool and we can easily find a good setting for shooting this, um, this shot. 
So as a conclusion, uh, we did uh, the entire previous uh, with Blender. So uh, we modelized everything into Blender. And um, the director um, shot the, 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 the um, did the, the, the virtual shooting into the, the Blender game engine. So it's really easy to use. Um, the interface is uh, specific for the director. It's very similar than uh, shooting on stage. Uh, it's interactive. And uh, the interaction, in interaction between the artist and the directors are very simple because we are working on the same uh, blend file, so there's no import-export uh, problems. And of course, the um, um, virtual projection rooms uh, allows the director to explore the real potential of uh, 3D movies. And uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Can you repeat the question? I'm searching for Sergei. I think Sergei is here. Are you here? Okay. Another. Just one quick question. When we change the computers. Okay. You can ask the question.